So I don't have a fish video for you, but wait, 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 don't go anywhere yet. Because if you like shrimp, chances are you will like isopods. So stick around and check them out because they're pretty cool animals. All right, so here is the isopod condominium right here. There's six drawers full of isopods. Some of them are labeled, some of them are not. I need to finish labeling them. But honestly, the ones that are labeled came with the label, so that's why they have labels. But anyways, so as you can see, the first one here is the Giant Canyon. Open this up. And all of these also have springtails in them. So you can see there's nutritional yeast here. That's what all this is. That's for the springtails to eat. Chances are we're going to find some right under here. Yep. See, we got some nice babies there, some adults. These guys took a while to settle in. I think uh, when I first got them, I was moving them around too much, trying out different types of enclosures before I settled on the rack system here. And uh, I think it just made them not interested in breeding. There we go, some down here. And uh, I guess I should show you how this is set up. So it's a drawer, yes. But if we open this all the way up, without it falling, I hope, and then look in the back, you can see we have ventilation back here. And I started them all off with two holes on each side, but it dried out way too quick. So I plugged one of the holes back up, and I find that one hole, one ventilation hole here uh, works a lot better. And then I also missed, I only missed the front half here, so this always stays dry, and then this is always nice and damp. Uh, the moss is not very damp, but if you get down in here, this is really damp. So they can kind of regulate what kind of moisture they want and go back and forth depending on what they need. But there are the giant canyons. Next we have the orange bigger, orange bigger. Oh, there's one right up there. Another one scooting around down here somewhere. These guys also kind of took a while, but I'm starting to see babies in these guys now. Uh, let's see, yep, look at that. Hopefully I didn't just squish one. Nope, that's not one. This one you can see the springtails crawling around on there in the lower left hand piece of the wood. And of course, just tons of babies. Uh, and then there's other small pieces buried in here as well. The baby there, lots of springtails. And again, same feature in the back there, plugged hole on this side and then ventilated on the other side. So the reason I say if you like shrimp, you might like isopods is because they're very similar. I mean, they're both crustaceans for one but they just come in so many different colors, just like neocardinias. There's actually a lot more variety of isopods than there are like uh, neocardinias, but you know, I'm not gonna say that they're better. <laughs> they're pretty sweet though. So that's the orange vigor. Uh, again, slow to start, but uh, just now starting to take off. What if we lift it up over here? Yeah. These guys, as you can see, are one of the species that do curl up in a ball. It's a defensive mechanism, and they also do that when they need to preserve moisture. They'll roll up. Going on down the list, here we have Tarragona. This is a dwarf species of isopod. So these ones are probably the most stingiest of all of them. It took them by far the longest to start reproducing. And it's another one where I'm just now getting babies, but it's not very many. So I, I still don't think I have it dialed in just right, but they're all the same uh, piece of carrot in here. I do throw random vegetables in here for them. Uh, they do like cabbage, but they won't eat cabbage like this here. Where am I at? Like this here. They won't actually start like eating into this until it's all the way brown and really shriveled up. So I just wait for it to break down and then they start gnawing on it. Uh, I do need to add some more springtails in here. You see a little bit of mold in here. Actually, do I see any springtails in here at all? Oh yeah, they're down there. You can see one right there. Just not very many, another one right there. So I'll probably add, I have three springtail cultures, so I'll probably add some more in here to help uh, deal with this over here. And again, blocked off, ventilation. And I believe the next guys are powder orange. Let's see, we got more cabbage and carrots down here. These guys, I feel, are very similar looking to like the orange vig vigor, but the orange just stands out a lot better in my opinion. These guys are doing pretty well for me. If we flip this over, you can see they're just everywhere. There's springtails everywhere. I really don't like to move the wood that often because I feel like every time I do, I might squish one. But 
This one also has a little bit more dirt in it. As you can see, a lot of my enclosures are topped with uh, sphagnum moss and then dirt below it. But this one, um, I think I just ran out of moss. But yeah, look back there in the corner. They're just everywhere. And that's the other interesting thing about these guys. These particular species don't really seem to have like a favorite side. So it's super dry back here. And it's pretty moist up here. And they're still hanging out all over the place. So so I do think they're one of the more forgiving species as far as their environment because they're just all over this place. They don't seem to have a favorite side like the other species. Uh, so these three species that we've looked at so far, there's none on the dry side. They never go to the dry side, but these guys are everywhere. And then second to last, we have a booming, and I mean booming population of Dalmatians. And you might think, Bob, you're crazy. There's nothing in here, but just wait, 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 wait. Here we go. Bam, look at that. Holy smokes, and I take out probably, I don't even know how many of these I take out a week, a ton of them. These guys have just been by far the most prolific species. Some of these don't have any pattern at all, and then you see like some of the ones right there in the middle. Crazy, crazy Dalmatian patterns on them. So pretty sweet, I really like these guys. Obviously, when you have that much success, you tend to like them more. And then we go back to like the normal, they don't like the dry side. They always hang out under the wood, and sometimes you can find them up here. Yeah, there's one there, but under that wood is where they like to hang out for sure. So this species has been particularly rewarding, and if you remember my original isopod video, you might remember that I had zebra isopods. Uh, my entire colony crashed. I'm not sure why. Um, I'm still pretty much a novice when it comes to isopods, so I'm not really good at diagnosing what happened. I was talking to my local fish store and they said maybe it got a little too dry, but from my research they like it drier, so I'm not really sure. And then the last species here is just a common wood lice that I've found while moving cinder blocks for my pond. And I only scooped up about a dozen of them, so I don't know if we're going to see any. Probably not. So this is where I had kept the zebra isopods. I thought I got them all out of there, but apparently not. And I don't honestly think we're gonna find any of these guys because there's just not a lot of them in here I'd be pretty surprised all right I hope you enjoyed this video even though it was not fish related do not worry we will be returning to our regularly scheduled programming by the time the next video comes out don't forget we are now live streaming twice a week monday evening and friday morning so make sure you're subscribed hit that notification bell it's a lot of fun come hang out and i hope to see you there